Sometimes functions undo one another. The example I like to give of this is conversion functions. What we have here is a function that takes the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and converts it to degrees Celsius, and a function that takes the temperature in degrees Celsius and converts it to degrees Fahrenheit. What would happen if I took the composition of these functions? I'm not going to do any math here. I'm just going to think it through. Composition is done right to left. So we start with x, then we apply the function f, then we apply the function c. So what this first function does is take a temperature in degrees Celsius and convert it to degrees Fahrenheit. The second function, C, takes a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and converts it to degrees Celsius. So what happens, we started with X, a temperature in degrees Celsius. We converted it to Fahrenheit, then we converted it back again. And the net change of this process is nil. We convert it, we convert it back. We end up exactly where we started. This composition C of F of X equals X. This X is the input of the composition. This X is the output and the input and the output are the same. Likewise, if we convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then from Celsius back to Fahrenheit, that also doesn't do anything. So if we take the composition the other way, once again, we wind up with the input and the output of this composition being the same. This motivates the following definition. Two functions, f, and G are inverses if F of G of X equals X and G of F of X equals X. The intuition behind inverses is that functions are inverses if they undo 
one another. So conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit and conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius are inverses because those processes undo one another. A purely mathematical example would be f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals the cubed root of x. Cubing a function and taking the cubed root undo each other. If you start with an input x and then you cube it and then you take the cubed root, you wind up back where you started. Or if you start with an input x and you take its cubed root and then you cube it, you wind up back where you started. Here we just call our functions f and g, but one piece of notation for the road, if you have a function f of x and you want to denote its inverse, you do so by putting a negative one in the superscript between the function name and the variable. So this function is f of x, this function is the inverse. of f of x.